Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. I'm here to spotlight some of the most exciting film, television, and theater awards contenders working today. Who is in the running? What makes an awards-worthy performance? And how can you, my dear listener, win a statue of your own? We're sitting down for intimate, inspirational interviews with actors and artists to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more. It's an opportunity for some of today's most talented stars to share their craft and career advice, and maybe, just maybe, provide a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. A lot of times when you go into auditions, you think that the people are doing you a favor. Mm. When the truth of the matter is, it's their job to find the right person. You're doing them a favor because you brought your good talent and energy Mm -hmm. across town. Mm -hmm. huh? You dusted off your headshot. You memorized the lines (laughs) or whatever you did before you walk in there. Let's talk about Nisi Nash. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. I really love doing this podcast. Mm. And I li- I think I like it because there's something thrilling about interviewing someone in a it's not live, but it's live in a sense that people are listening. Yeah. And I don't know who's listening. That's no. kind of weird. You know, it's it weird in a fun way. Oh, you but weirdos out there. Yeah. Hi weirdos. G- uh, good morning <laughs> or good afternoon or good evening, whatever. Nisi Nash coming in to record this podcast, it's just like, it reminds me why I love doing this, I mm, think. I really like interviewing people, especially people who are good at what they do, especially people who are good at talking about why they're good at what they do, Yeah, um, whose work is thorough and varied and unpredictable and unexpected. And who is, is uh, there's a ton of spontaneity in an interview like with Nisi. Definitely. Uh, with many of these interviews. Yeah. But there's also like us bringing it all back to the, the backstage questions that we want to ask. We want uh, advice for working actors, mm. particularly actors at the beginning of their career. Or, and or all working artists, stage and screen, behind the camera, behind the stage, everything. Nisi delivered all of that. Yeah. Kind of without my needing to ask. <laughs> she sat down in this chair that I'm currently sitting in and she realized that we were recording and she immediately wrote a love letter to backstage. Yeah. In that. her way, in her hilarious, loving way. Yeah. She's got an amazing style and presence about <laughs> her, which was very presence. infectious. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And I re- I got to I know it sounds sort of whatever, but I one of the highlights of my career if you know, if you if you look at it in little snippets, one of my little snippet highlights is her leaving, and I hear her in the hallway turning to her publicist and saying, "That was a great interview." <laughs> I, I immediately like wrote it down as like a yes, life this moment. This is yes, like this is <laughs> why affirming. I love doing this. Yeah. she is why I love doing this, and I admire her so much. If anyone's ever seen Reno 911, if anyone's ever seen Scream Queens, if anyone's ever seen the complete opposite of those two things, uh, her work on Getting On, mm. which we talked about a lot. Because that proved that she can be not just this outrageous, funny actress, but she can do this subtle, subdued drama. Yeah. Getting on is technically a comedy, but it was drama. Yeah. And um, you've made fun of me before about the noises I make in the interviews. <laughs> I wouldn't say make fun, Let's, I would say. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> so what, what do we remember about the noises I made in this interview? Because out of all the ones we've had so far, I... This is where, like, we should isolate some of those moments and you should just play me like a real. I'm just going to do like, a little crazy. highlights package right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I kind of, because I'm, bas- I'm beside myself a lot yeah. in this interview. I'm just so blown away. I kind of didn't have to do much. I just had to sit there and react. And a lot yeah. of those reactions were like guttural noises. <laughs> um, particularly when she launched into her audition. I <laughs> loved everything she said about auditions. Yeah. Actors, you're looking for audition advice? You've come to the right episode. Um, when she launched into her audition as Rose Maxson in August Wilson's Fences <laughs> and described the exact way that she played that role. Oh, that was fascinating. I get chills just thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. 
I'm going to go listen to it right now. Yeah. I can't wait for y'all, to, for everyone to hear this. Is there anything else we need to say? No, I think we should just, we've hyped this to such a degree. We need to play it. Nisi, I hope you're listening. <laughs> I really, I, I hope you're listening. You're so brilliant on Claws. Season one, season two is out now. I love you. <laughs> Perfect note to end on. Was that weird? Here's Nisi. Sorry, it's creepy. Here's <laughs> Nisi. Hey, are you ready? Yes, you, listener. Are you ready to take the advice and the inspiration you've heard here in today's interview and use it in your own acting career? Is it something maybe you've always considered doing? Are you at the very beginning of your acting career? Are you well into your acting career and you're a fan of this podcast and you're ready to take those next steps? Backstage is here for you. This podcast is brought to you by Backstage and what we are offering listeners to this podcast is a free 30-day trial. That's right. We are giving you 30 days completely free to try out Backstage. All you need to do is go to checkout, backstage.com slash subscribe, and enter the code ENVELOPE. That's right. If you enter the code ENVELOPE at checkout, E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E, that's how you spell ENVELOPE, you get 30 free days on backstage.com. Browse our thousands of casting notices. Learn why it's the world's number one casting platform. If you are an actor and you haven't signed up yet for Backstage, I don't know what to tell you. Get on it. Nisi Nash worked for years on stage and screen before becoming well-known for her hilarious performance in Reno 911. She's also starred in Scream Queens, Getting On, which earned her two Primetime Emmy nominations, and the film Selma. She now stars as Desna Sims in the TNT crime drama Claws, created by Elliot Lawrence. Here it is, our interview with the one and only Nisi Nash. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Podcast. Is it time? We ready? It's time. Are you ready? Oh, are we on? Ooh, I think we're me, rolling. Let me turn my ringer off. Wait a minute. Backstage. <laughs> Wait, my claws. Got to get in here and cut my ringer off on my I phone. I wish podcast listeners could see your claws right I now. I wish they could. They're so good. They're all over your Instagram today. But are that's... they? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Your Instagram up a storm today. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> How was Upfronts? Upfronts was great. Can I just, before we even go any further, yes. can I just tell you that as um, a new actor, when I entered the into the business, yes. I was so in love with Backstage. <laughs> I remember finding some of my first plays, some of my first non-equity this, that, and the third, of course. some of my non-union gigabouts, <laughs> my things. Yes. Like, I just remember it was the end all to be all. And, and I'll be honest with you when I started my tour today I have to eat the elephant one bite at a time so I didn't know mm. where I was going up oh, front right. yes and yeah, then the yeah, next yeah. bit I said well where am I going after this got in the car and it was on the way here I didn't even know where I was coming I said well where am I going next? Right. she said backstage I said oh my god oh, good. oh my god like you do not know how much I love backstage and then I re- and then I said to my publicist oh gosh I <laughs> you absolutely you be, be, have. Because, you know, no, but seriously, wait a minute. You know, you get the paper publication that mm-hmm. literally within the last two years, I was trying so hard to be on the cover of. I was uh-huh. like, they don't know how much I love this book. Well, that, you know, that's amazing. And now I have children who I, I who want to be in the business. And I say, <sighs> yes. start right here. They'll tell you everything <sighs> you need to know. Well, that was the most amazing backstage propaganda I've ever heard, and I didn't even have to ask you for it. Oh. Usually I have to extract <laughs> it out of a guest and ask them to gush. And you just came, you just came oh, right out Oh, because that it. gush is real. Okay, now that's you saw us ask me stuff. Now that I got that out the way. <laughs> I think we can be done. I think that's all I need. And just <laughs> good evening, everyone. That's all I have for today. <laughs> So you really, so you were in LA, and that—that's what you were using. You were doing it for theater, for and yeah, and acting, and you know, gigs, yeah, yeah, before before I got before I got in the union, and even after, sure. And I love the articles and the interviews, and just Ugh. you know, learning more, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Um, what kind of stuff did you go out for? Was this this is before you had an agent? I imagine. Yes. What when? At what point did you get that? At what point did I get an agent? An agent, yeah. Oh. Honey, you asking me to go a long way back. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly when I got my agent. Um, 
that's hard to say. I mean, I don't it's also remember. hard to say like what your big break is. Cause well, my first job in the industry was a movie called Boys on the Side with mm-hmm. Whoopi Goldberg and Drew Barrymore. Mm-hmm. That shot here in New York. Yes. Um, that was my very first job. Okay. And then after that? and But you'd been auditioning before that. A little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that audition went... I, I know you've told the story before, but you, you walked in and you asked straight up if you had gotten the role, right? Because I didn't know any better. Listen, because if you're, you if you're listening out there, <laughs> use me as an example of what not to do. <laughs> I mean, that's just <laughs> because as good it was, as... it, it was my pro- first professional audition, but it was a producer session with the director of the film. Uh, uh-huh. And when I read my line or two, he said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. And, and he just, said, and you didn't thank <laughs> you. You may go. I said, oh, y'all are dismissing me. Well, did you pick me? <laughs> thank you means dismissal. Right, right. And I didn't get that. I was like, no, I got a baby at home. I need, I need to know now. I need to know right now. Yeah. And then you booked it. I ended up booking it. Wonderful. Yeah, but that was after I fussed and threw a fit in there because they wouldn't tell me right then. <laughs> and then I went and found another job, you know, doing selling makeup or something. Oh, yeah. And they oh, called yeah. me on my job and said, would you like to be in this? movie and if so we need you in new york tomorrow and little known fact i almost missed my flight because when they said somebody is going to pick you up i'm thinking you gonna send a boy named jeff in a camry like i don't know who who giving me a ride to the (laughs) airport but there was a limo sitting in front of my house for almost 30 minutes and we thought the lady next door had died (laughs) me and my mama was looking out the window like she was so kind she was a lovely neighbor no idea and we didn't know, no. And I said, oh, Lord, let me get it. Come on. Then got on the yeah. plane in sweatpants, got to turn to go to my seat, turning to the right. She says, oh, no, ma'am, you're in oh, first, you're class. first class. That's to the left. <gasps> I said, who? She said, you. So I go in first oh class my with my sweatpants on, you know, and I needed my edges to be laid right. So I had my scarf on. I didn't know what I was doing. Sure. I sit down on the plane and a woman hands me a menu. Oh my! And she said, oh. what would you like? And I said, well, how much is the shrimp? <laughs> Y'all don't have prices on here. And she said, oh, baby. Oh, there's no. Oh. <laughs> the price has already been paid. So it's almost like you were asking the flight attendant, oh, am I a movie star now? Listen. <laughs> listen. And you kind of were. Humble beginnings. <laughs> and that's why when I sit on there now, I don't take it lightly. No, I, good, I'm, yeah. I'm still sure. grateful. Good. Yeah. You're not jaded. What? Well, you know what? I think that people become jaded when they lose their sense of gratitude. Sure, yeah. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes I think we get this idea of what Hollywood is and we put it on. Like I have to act like this and have to act like Mm. that. When the truth of the matter is, is no, you don't. Mm. The only rule is for you to be true to yourself Mm. and to understand that there's so many people who want to be where you are. Sure. So that you have to not only have gratitude for it but you for me let me just speak for myself i can't speak for nobody Mm -hmm. else but i can say for me i purpose to be at a place where i still am of service in my gift so in other words if i Mm. book a job i never just book a job for me i'm gonna find somebody else a job you want to be a pa you want to be a grill what you know how to do honey can you pick up this water what you know what i mean you you know oh can i get an assistant whatever it is i'm going to find a way to make sure other people eat when i eat Mm -hmm. wonderful you know what i mean you have to be able to use that thing yeah for good and not evil uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cuz it you could easily fall down the evil path. And just worry about yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a way of, of by taking care of other people, that's maintaining that kind of grounded gratitude. Oh yeah, cuz you have yeah. to. And it's a responsibility. You have responsibility. You book a lead in a TV show and you have the power to hire people. Can we talk about that board. for a second? You are the lead in a TV show. Okay, and here's the thing that people need to understand um is that being a lead is not entitled it's not in hmm. being a lead is not entitled, but indeed, you understand yes, what I mean. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, Absolutely. it 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 almost denotes someone you want to follow. You you should be right. someone that your cast wants to follow mm-hmm. if you're going to lead them, mm. and not just you know being your thing, holding upset. Yeah. Having a diva fit. Sure. And, and, and all of the antics. I mean, you could yeah. do that, but why? And if you follow anybody out there who follows me on social media, mm. you see what I post at work. I mean, 
I am working hard because I have so many pages of dialogue to memorize. Oh yeah, and so many, so many different personalities I have to manage on that set. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm the same girl who comes to work with hula hoops and a and an old school <laughs> skip it. I'm like, cool. come on! I mean, in between cool. takes, what you got? Let's cool. let's keep the morale up because the days are long and it's exhausting. Yeah, and it's your responsibility. It's part of your responsibility as as someone who booked the lead role. I feel like it yeah. is. Yeah. I also feel like I see that in the performance. Like I see, it doesn't surprise me to hear that you're a mama hen because you're you're kind of playing a mama hen on the show. And, and that's it, my real life. You've created a family, absolutely. On yeah. the plane. Oh, I can't wait till we get off so I can get a band aid. I got one in my purse. Here, do you want some? Uh, oh. Here, here's a little something for you. Know what yeah. I mean? All of that. So yeah. I do mother these girls in a in a real life way. Yeah. That's where my character and my real life intersect. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, is that something that you, for the longest time, you know, it's a leading role. Like, is this something that you you always thought, oh, when, if and when I'm the lead of a TV show, this is the precedent I will set. These are the practices I will do. I have to probably say I never really thought about it. Uh huh. I feel like I live a life to be of service. And anytime gotcha. I get a job on a show, Regardless the of next the job. question becomes the job is my due, but my who is to be of service. Mm-hmm. So, Lord, mm-hmm. what's the assignment mm-hmm. for me in this place? Of service. The, the work yeah. is the work, but what's my assignment? Mm. Who do I need to love on? Who do I need to introduce to you? Gotcha. Who do I need to pray for? Who do I. So, you show up to be, I show up to be of service. Mm-hmm. So, not if the the lead came, but when it came, yeah. I didn't act any different than I acted when I was number three or four on the call sheet. Right. Okay. I showed up to be of service. Be of service. Yeah. Is it safe to say that's your that's the philosophy? That's the artistic mission. Boom. Or like human being mission, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. And it's true that you've had you apply that to a lot of different a lot of different genres of acting, a lot of different kinds of performances. Reno Nine One One was mostly improvised. <laughs> getting on, I know it was technically a comedy, but I consider Getting On to be pretty much a drama. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a very funny show. You know but what? It's it's hard to coin. But that was that was a good get. I need to ask about that because that does seem like a pivotal moment. You've kind of talked about how. After you had got established a certain amount of name recognition, you started to see that you were put in a box, in the funny box. Yes, but let's take two steps back mm-hmm. and let's just talk about, just because I want the people listening, <clears throat> if they're in a stage in their career and they're mm-hmm. just trying to navigate it and figure it out, to understand that when I walked in that door for that audition for mm-hmm. Reno 911, mm-hmm. I had never done sketch, I had never done improv, <laughs> I had never heard of the Groundlings, I had never heard of Second City, I didn't know anybody who was in it, oh, wow. I never heard of the state, I didn't know any of these people from a can <laughs> of paint. Right. They called me and and said there's a show they didn't even say improv they said that it's sketch uh-huh. oh. can you do sketch uh-huh. originally this yeah. is how it started and I said Psh, yeah <laughs> and then I hung up the phone and I called my friend Big George shout out George Sharperson <laughs> another actor in the business I called Big George and I said what the hell is sketch <laughs> and he was like oh it's when you do characters I was like oh, okay bet oh, I can yeah, do that yeah, yeah, yeah. so I kind of faked my way right. into it I said I could do something that I couldn't do, but I knew that by the time (laughs) they called me with my appointment, I was going to be ready. So, you know, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. So up until that point, what kind of training had you had and what did you want to be doing? Well, I, when I entered the business, I wanted to be a serious actress. Gotcha. I wanted to be, if you if, if, if you of a certain age, you know Cicely Tyson. <sighs> if you're not, if you're a little younger, you know Viola Davis. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to be either one of them gotcha. from the beginning. I never wanted to be funny. I didn't think that funny was a, was a thing because I got pinched mm. in church. For mm. laughing and telling jokes, oh. I got put on punishment. Why would you? Why did the teacher put talks too much on your report card? Cause I was telling jokes. <laughs> oh, you want to? I got a joke for you. Go get the belt. So, oh, no. <laughs> so I. It wasn't. It wasn't. It my. I, they would say to me, "Oh my God, this child is so silly. Go sit down." And I mm. did not know. So yep. when people told me I was funny, I got offended. Right. Because I wanted to be taken seriously. And I'm a know. thespian. I've studied my craft and I'm of ready. Course. And I, but I was still funny. And it's the kind of thing you can't learn in a class. 
Sorry, oh, absolutely. Y'all. You can't learn that in the comedic class. Comedic timing, your comedic timing. You can't, you can't learn that. You you either mm-hmm. is there or or not. I agree. Or not. But you but you wanted to be the kind of you wanted to get the kind of role like on getting on. I, yes, I guess. and you know what? Those were Hollywood was kind. Mm. But because I had done Reno, I played Cedric the Entertainer's wife for five years. Yeah. I had done all of these comedies. They were like, "Oh no, you're funny. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. Stay over there." And I was like, can I come over there? No, ma'am. No, ma'am, you can't. <laughs> so and, that... and and Mark and Will, uh, the creators of um, Mark Olsen and Will Schaefer, the creators of Getting On for yeah. HBO, gave me my first chance to and do did drama. You, was that because you asked them specifically, or why did they They just take called that me chance? in and at least gave me the audition. Okay. And in the audition, because, you know, I think they come from that school People who can make you laugh can make you cry, oh, but it's not yeah. the other way around. Mm, interesting. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. The women who you know that weep on camera mm. and can fall all out in the streets, you're not going to have them coming to an NBC comedy <laughs> near you. You're know, you, you you're not going to see those people sure. doing leading a comedy. Okay. But you can take a comedic actor, mm-hmm. look at Robin Williams, it's and you put do. him in Good Will Hunting, sure. and you put yeah. him in Patch Adams, and yeah. it becomes a whole other thing. Yeah, it's a good example. Yeah. yeah. Or a Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, yeah. Brilliant com- com- comedic genius and then you give him one chance to do drama and he kills it because I mean, you guys at, have that instinct yeah it's all about the timing i think mm-hmm. i've also heard it said that in order to play sometimes if you need to play a really dramatic or really serious scene you could play it like comedy in your head you could play it as if it's comedy and it can be read as drama have you found that at all <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know for me, I try to play the truth of the thing. Mm. And whatever mm. whatever that is, is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know. What do you remember about the getting on audition? What I remember is that initially, <clears throat> pay close attention. This is where you're going to get all of the things you need <laughs> to make it in this business. Okay. Ugh. What I remember about that audition you is... You understand re- so completely what exactly I need from you today, and you're just serving it to me. Anyway, continue. Here's what the people <laughs> need. When I read the material, I didn't just read it for me. Hmm? When I read mm-hmm. it, I said, oh, my God, so-and-so would be great at that. Oh, so-and-so cool. could do this. Oh, um, what's the girl I knew from? What's, she could be great at that. Yeah. So I called every girl I knew who I thought could be these parts. Oh. And I said, hey, girl, hey, there's a thing. It's called getting on. Ask your people to get you. I, they think they're starting to see wow. people next week, but try to get in there. Look at the role of da-da-da. So my daughter walks in. You. My daughter walks in, one of them, the middle one, and she says, um, you know, I just don't think it's right. You calling all these people and telling them to come down there. And she was pointing her finger at me kind of when she said it. She said, and then somebody going to mess around and get your part. That don't even uh. make sense. And I said, well, first of all, put your finger down. <laughs> Second of all, this is what you, it was a teachable moment. I said, yeah. what you need to know, little girls, can't nobody do what God want me to do. Mm, mm. Can't nobody do what God called you to do. I said, and if it's not my job, how wonderful is it? That God used me as a conduit to get somebody else sure. I know employed. Sure. So either way it go, we winning. Yeah. It you goes understand back what to I'm that saying? Yeah. Second thing, speak life. When I got ready to go into that audition, I walked in the kitchen because I live up in the valley in Los Angeles, and the audition was way down in Los Angeles. I said, Mama, come ride with me somewhere because I needed somebody for the carpool lane. She said, Where? <laughs> so she said, Where are we going? I said, I'm about to go book this job. Right yes. Quick. Get Listen, Emmy nominated. You, you, you have to be your <laughs> own advocate, PR, hype man, all of it. Yeah. So when we get... And if you need to get in the carpool lane, you got to bring somebody to get in the carpool lane. Bring somebody with you. Yeah. I get in the carpool lane. I go down there. Here's the second part of it. Even though I had read the script and I was going in for one character, my heart was drawn to another. I was going in for the role of uh, Don Forchette, oh. who was played by Alex Borstein. By Alex, Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. When I got down there, I auditioned for that role. Yeah. They gave me a call back for the same role. Now, really? me and Alex about to go head to head. Huh. But when I walked back in there, I said, can I please read this other world? Yeah. And you know what they said to me? No, you cannot, because we don't see you as that character. Oh. In the BBC version, she was a 60-year-old white woman. And I oh. was like. And was that the reason? Okay. Oh, okay. They just were like, we don't see you as her. And I said, okay. Interesting. But then I said, followed up by, listen, followed up by, 
let me just explain to you the reason why I love this character so much. Mm. And you did this so in the audition start, group. Yeah. yeah. I started telling them how much I loved her because we got to read two episodes. The things I oh, loved wow. about her and noticed about her in episode one. Here are some things that in episode two, she didn't talk a lot, but you saw this on her mm. face. And I'm just going <sighs> into all the, I was just in love with her on the page. Yeah. And they said, well, we really don't see you as that character, but if you love it that much, I, I, we guess you could go ahead and, and read, read for it. it. Mm. I said, thank you. He said, well, would you, like, would you like to come back on Friday? I said, no, sir, I would not. I'm here right now. <laughs> You're doing it right now. He said, well, we don't have the size ready. I said, okay, that's all right. I'll wait. Oh, okay. And I got up and I walked out real fast and didn't give them a chance to change their mind. <laughs> right. I walk out and wait for them to get the material together, and I see Lori Metcalf. Lori freaking Metcalf. Oh, my Lori God. America's Lori Metcalf. <laughs> I was like, ooh, they go on Jackie. <laughs> and so I walk out and I see her, and I'm just literally salivating. I was like, oh, my God, she's a genius. I go back in. I read my part. and before, Not with her. No. no. Mm-mm. Before I got to my car, when I shut the door and said, thanks, guys, Mm. they looked at each other and said, that's the girl. Bingo. That's amazing. And so if I was not prepared. Oh, yeah. Or I miss it, or I, I was afraid to speak up. Here's what, okay, let me tell you what happens. A lot of times when you go into auditions, you think that the people are doing you a favor. Mm. When the truth of the matter is, it's their job to find the right person. You're doing them a favor because you brought your good talent and energy mm-hmm. across town. Mm-hmm. huh? You dusted off your headshot. You memorized <laughs> the lines or whatever you did before you walk in there. Yep. Now, this is a side note. This is me. I don't memorize nothing until I'm getting a check. Now, that's just me. Oh, okay, okay. But neither here nor there. You walking in, you're prepared. They want you to do great. And then your first, here's the trick to mastering the audition. Your first three minutes in the room, you only got one job. What's that? And that is get them to like you. Why? Because people want to work with people that they like. Oh, absolutely. And so let's say you're coming in for something and it's, you know, three other girls in the room. And one of them says, Oh, no, you didn't. And the up next one goes, oh, no, you didn't. And the other one goes, oh, no, you didn't. It, 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 any version of that will work. Sure. But you're going to want to choose the person who you vibing with. Yeah. Who yeah. you feel like has a good energy. Oh, yeah. And not coming in the room just blank. Should I stand here? Okay, great. Are we right. ready? What do you need from me? Am I reading with you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just so into mm. because they want to they wanna get a little sense of you. Mm-hmm. What are you going to be like on set? Out of character. And if you already yeah. giving me a fever and you just walked in here. Right, right. I'm going to go with the other girl out there. Totally. Especially, I almost feel like, especially if it's like a one-line audition. Oh, yeah. Like that. And let me tell you something, honey. But let me tell you something. When it comes, there, listen. When I don't care where you starting from. You could start from the bottom. I would have an under five line, and mm-hmm. baby, I would spank it. And what I would call <laughs> it is saving a little sauce for the ribs. Now, that's, oh. a, that's the Nisi Nash of it all. Mm-hmm. Save a little sauce for the ribs. Find you something to do that's uniquely you when yeah. you walk into that room. When you read the character, if it says, like, you know, um, a saucy teen, um, you know, with an, with an attitude a mile long. Uh-huh. Okay, you could just walk in there and give the attitude, but what if you walked in there and you was chewing a piece of gum with it? And in the middle of that mm. line, you took that gum and you stretched it out across <laughs> your finger and then ate yeah. it back off your finger. Like, what? Yeah. It, it creates something in the room. Yeah. Or if while you're reading the lines, you're just going to take your brush out and brush your hair like that. Why Ooh, you? a prop. Why you giving me, mm. you know what I'm saying, a mm-hmm. who to for and what to do? Sure. You have to find the thing, yeah. find magic in what's between the lines. Yeah, you almost want the casting director to do that. Uh, what? That, 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 like, that part. What? Mm. Oh. Mm. Especially if they've heard, what was the line you, you said? If they've heard that line 20 times that day right. or more. Oh, no, you did. Yeah. If you come in and you say, oh, no, and then you do the bubblegum thing, then you say or you did Or something. Didn't. You got to just like find that. a thing to make it your own. Right. I remember I auditioned for a play, and and it was a... Uh, it was a. Uh, What's the fences oh, when yeah. I was in college? You're gonna and do every rows? girl was doing rows, yes. and they were going in there. And I hate those audition rooms where you could hear the people because it's super small. Yeah. And everybody was yelling, what about my life? What about <laughs> me? Don't I have thoughts and feelings? And yelling <laughs> to the top of their yeah. throat. And baby, I went in there, and I took that thing down to a whisper. <laughs> I said, what about <laughs> my life? You don't think I ever wanted things, thoughts, and dreams? 
took that thing down to a whisper and they said, ladies and gentlemen, the person, they put your name up on the hallway in college and tell you who won what. My name was sitting up there bright as day. Because I did, so I went opposite. Just because it say she's uh, mad don't mean you got to come in there yelling to the top of your throat like a, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I remember I auditioned for ER one time and the, and the girl was in there. It was like, uh, we we're supposed to find out if, if this missing baby came up. And, uh-huh. and nobody, you know, it was a Jane Doe. And so people were auditioning to play the mother. Like, is and the mother was like, no, that's her. And the father was like, I don't think it's her. Because uh-huh. now it's age progressed. Right, right, right. So she got missing when she was little, literally. And now she's four or something. Uh-huh. And so this girl went in there, baby, and was yelling. She was like, it's her! <laughs> and I mean, full on snot. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Full on tears. It's a choice. Heaving, yeah. yelling. Came out. Woo! Yeah, I did that. Boxing the air, <laughs> jumping up and down. I was like, oh, my God. I walked in that room with somebody because they made us read in pairs. And I looked at that baby and I said, it's her. Before I could get her out, I literally collapsed toward the boy like I lost my footing. <gasps> and he just reached up and grabbed Ooh. me. Like I did it just a little yeah. more internal. Not What is she doing? Okay, I'm not going to do that. Find another note. You got to have tricks in your bag that you can pull out in the moment. Right. But it almost sounds like it's because you heard, you overheard other auditions that you were able to innovate. Oh, I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. And that's what, but see, you got to stay ready. You got to be nimble. Right. Well, and it sounds like the getting on audition was the same thing. You innovated in the sense of like, I'm actually going to, I'm interested in a different character. Yeah. And I really. And you got it. And I want that one. Yeah. And then Alex ended up with the other one. Yep. How interesting. Perfect And Lori wasn't attached. Yeah. But you saw her in the audition. No, she room. was there. She was oh, okay. doing her part. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she yeah. was. Just, I don't even know why she was up there, just to be amazing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Have you seen her on Broadway just now? No, and women? I know okay. she's. I just got here la- uh, yeah, last yeah, yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you got to go see it. Yeah. You got to see it. Three Tall Women? Is that Three it? Three Tall Women, yeah. yeah. It's a great play. I've never. It's. She's amazing, obviously. Yeah. You auditioning as Rose just now to me was the single greatest moment I've ever had on this podcast. <laughs> I also, I spent so much time on that monologue specifically because I'm writing this piece on Viola Davis and I, and I wrote about the movie a lot. Did you play, Rose? Did you yeah. did you play the part? You played that part mm-hmm. in that production. Yeah. Can you do it again? Can you come to Broadway and do it or something? <laughs> <laughs> I would kill to see your Rose. Oh, uh, well, if they call me. <laughs> Hello? Is this Broadway calling? Would you come to Broadway? Of course. Yeah. I, I started in a the theater. Stage. No, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know that. Oh, sure. But well, I, that's why you have your chops. You started on stage. I started on stage. Right? That's where you mm-hmm. got to go. And then when, um, you know, I didn't really lean into my funny mm. until my brother was murdered in 93 and my mother went into a mm. depression. And the only thing I knew was that I could make my mother laugh. And so mm. I went to the foot of her bed and I performed every day. My act, my my thing, my huh. characters, my, you know, whatever I had. I yeah. left my funny at the foot of her bed, and that was when I realized it was a gift. Yeah. She went from laying down in the bed to sitting up in the bed. Mm. I've got my peanuts and my water. Go on and do your rendition of things. Your rendition of things. And I would do my rendition of things, and then mm. one day I went over there, and my mother wasn't in the bed. And I was like, Ma? And she says, we're in here. And I'm like, who is we? I went across the street and got the neighbors, and Miss Brown and Miss Sadie. Uh, I told them you was funny. You Get that karaoke <laughs> microphone and tell these people some jokes. Y'all gonna love this. Interesting. So she and went it, from the pinching and the scolding after the... To, to saying, to, stand up there and entertain these people. That's how you became And when an I was actor. standing up there doing my rendition of things for the people across the street, yeah, I heard a voice as audible as my own say that, Nisi, other people are suffering. Mm. Don't be a selfish heifer. Go outside and spread this around. And I went, I could not get a job anywhere in town. I went outside and I said, I'm uh. Nisi Nash and I'm funny. And people say, yes, you are, little girl. Come here. Yes. And it took me almost 25 years to work my way back around to the vision that I saw in my mind. So I'm going to tell you, when you see something for yourself, though the vision tarries, you wait for it because mm-hmm. it will come to path if you it will come to pass if you stay on the path. Mm-hmm. If you get off the path, then. You know, then you're off the path. You're off. Yeah. But if you stay on, that thing will circle back around. It took me 20 years, <sighs> damn near, to get to getting on. And then I was a double Emmy nominee two years in a row for it. For a show that not a lot of people actually watched. That's my point. Right? (laughs) The important people watched it, clearly. But I I know that the ratings for that show were actually really low. Listen. Enough people watched it. You preaching to the choir. Right? I think it's remarkable. But I was like, I didn't, when I got nominated, I said, people watch this? (laughs) I didn't even know. Yeah. That must have been a shock. And then the other thing, and you know, I will leave your viewers with is this, is that... 
you know, it is not called them esteem, us esteem, Ooh, uh-huh. mama esteem. Mm-hmm. It's called self esteem. It's what do you believe about yourself? Because you always gonna have naysayers and people who don't get on. My mama mm-hmm. told me when I said I wanted to be an actress that I was kind hearted and I should go into nursing. And oh, I said, funny. so I got to clean our bedpans because you don't believe the call on my life? You said, I'm going to play a nurse on TV instead. I mean, <laughs> you know, but my point being is that you you believe that thing and you hold on to it no matter what. This July 11, for those of you who are in Los Angeles, I'll be getting a star on the Hollywood <gasps> Walk of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. And a lot of people ask me, are you surprised? Hmm. I said, I'm not. It, it, is it part reason, of the vision? Well, I was maybe nine, and I was in on Hollywood Boulevard with my dad, and I saw a man, and I said, oh, my God, daddy, that man is on TV. And uh-huh. my daddy looked, and he said, baby, that's Ed Asner. Oh, amazing. So I, I run over, and I go, sir, I know you on TV. My name is Nisi. I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to have my name right here on one of these stars, too. And he was like, mm-hmm, yeah, kid, scram. <laughs> and he walked off, and I said, remember my name. Oh, my God. So I knew when I told him what I was talking about. And as a matter of fact, this summer, I got a letter from Ed Asner. No. Hand to the God I serve. Did he remember? A card. Because I was telling this story somewhere. Uh, And I guess somebody told him. Oh, funny. And he sent me a letter and said, thank you for not letting a crotchety old man Uh. discourage your dreams. And of course, I know your name. Oh, my gosh. Then he wrote a little picture of a star and he wrote my name through it. So, Ed Asner, if you're listening, you're cordially invited to my star <laughs> ceremony. I really hope Ed Asner is listening. If he I can't comes, believe that story. Let me tell you something. I'm really going to reach out to his whoever, mm-hmm. his peeps. Yeah, um, because yeah. if I see him. He should him, introduce you at the start. Listen, yeah. when I tell you something, nothing will happen but tears will be falling out of my eyes. Yeah. I'm going to have to call my mother and ask for one of her nerve pills because I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm not going to make you it. You told Ed Asner a prophecy and it came true. Right, I told him what I knew, and so and so. Of course, you're getting a star. You know, you knew you, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah, the nine. I mean, I just had to wait. Though the vision tells. But the but the twenty years. I mean, listeners of this podcast, they're they're going to be they're going to be fixated on those twenty years on the struggle. Well, but how do you persevere? But here's the thing, you the three words that I've lived by in my career are no matter what. Mm. I was the only girl in this business with my peer group that had children very early. Hmm. So when Um, I got a call back, I had to take all three of them. What are Mm -hmm. you going to do? You're going to hold on to that vision no matter what. Sit down in this corner, get a baby a graham cracker, you get your coloring book out, don't nobody move. If the director come out here and look at you, you smile pretty. Uh Because that's what I had to do. Absolutely. I remember taking one baby and I was talking to this girl in the lobby and she was probably like, why is this girl talking to me? I was like, so where are you from? (laughs) Who who are your people? And What's your mom and them name? What's going on? And she was just like, oh my God, why is this girl so annoying? And then they called my name and I had my baby on my lap and I just looked at her and I said, can you hold this for me? Can you hold this right quick? (laughs) I'll be right back. I swear. That's really sneaky. You know, but but what can you do? You you. So there's always going to be an obstacle. Hashtag. So what? Yeah. Hashtag. No matter what. And figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. Whatever it takes. Right. And it sounds like your approach to auditioning is just so. It's unlike anything I've heard on on in these interviews. Where your approach to auditioning is, if you need to ask for something on in the audition room, you ask for it. You know why? You don't apologize for being there. Because that's your audition, Mm -hmm. and you have to own it. And you you have to be like, you know what? I'm sorry. Can we go back? Yeah. Can can we just run through this one more time? Mm -hmm. You're doing them a favor. You know, because I want to make sure that you, when we walk out of here, you Mm -hmm. got the best thing on tape of me. Mm -hmm. You got the best version of me. You see that I can take a note. Right. If they give you a note and say, do it more, dot, 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 don't do it the same because that's what you prepared. Totally. Stop it. Knock it off. What? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Totally. Just go home and make you a sandwich because they ain't calling you back. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) You you ain't even got to babysit the phone. Don't sit right there. (laughs) They're not calling you. Right. (laughs) You got to be able to adjust. Yep. Yeah. And it sounds like for getting on it, especially you read every word of that script and you've studied it backwards and forwards. I was just like, oh, I'm in love with this And you words. loved it. Yeah. I loved yeah, it. Yeah. And then I'll tell you another thing. I was directed initially to be very jaded. Been there, done that. Mm. And it was the day we began principal photography that they told me we made a mistake. After we rehearsed it that oh. way for two, oh, three cool, weeks, cool, cool. they said, we, need we, a new want direction. You, we want you to be fish out of water. We want to mm. discover this world through oh, your eyes. You were, you were the audience. Yeah. With the note 
in your mind. Yeah. Just keep it in there. White people are crazy. <laughs> Okay. I said, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's a whole, you had to switch on a dime from being sassy and I know everything to be fish out of water. But it still fit what you thought of the character. Sure. Yeah. I just love the fact that she didn't talk that much. Oh, yeah. And oh, that she so just, much with her face. face. Yeah, you do so much with your face. And the then show. they make you feel, you know, I had lived my life in this business coming right on set, going in hair and makeup. And, and you come out of there looking like angels is dancing on your face. Getting on was like no glamorous hair, no nope. makeup, and, and take off that smank. <laughs> And now For I'm standing and, and now I'm show. standing there under the worst lighting God has ever created, <laughs> trying to use my face in a way that I never have before. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Oh, look at me with my ugly self. What is happening right now? <laughs> Did you like the way you looked? Do you care? Do you in watch the, yourself? In the, in the beginning I I thought I looked horrible because I was so yeah. used to looking at another version of myself. And I learned to right. lean in and love it. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? I learned to be like, yes, Nurse yeah. Didi. That's part of the realness of that show. You you, you couldn't have had it any other way, I Mm-mm. don't think. Mm-mm. And so that's a decent segue to Claws, because Claws is the complete opposite in terms of the glamour and the Baby, look. Baby, 45 pairs of eyelashes, but, skin ah! tight, this, <laughs> boobs everywhere. And the Claws, of course. And Claws but everywhere. correct me if I'm wrong, was there an audition? There was no audition. No. You booked the gig. You, it was and a phone an call. offer. Yeah babies the time that they pick up that phone and they say and it'll be a time where you will have everyone on your team will be there it'll be like Ooh. hey uh jane we we have um scott martin ricky and and you know whoever mm-hmm. all the people are in your life on the phone mm-hmm. and you're like uh-huh. uh-huh and then your heart gonna start beating fast oh wow yeah and then you're like they want to take a meeting with you <gasps> just a meeting <laughs> i've arrived <laughs> <laughs> and then remind me, what was the timing of, there was another pilot that you were doing that was canceled on the I, day you booked Claus. I, I did a pilot for Fox. Yeah. And the day I found out it didn't go, yeah. the people from Claus called uh-huh. and said, can we see you tomorrow? And uh-huh. I said, yes. And, and I went and just took a meeting, got in my car to leave, and I had not made it to the gate of the studio. Uh-huh. And my manager called and was like, so what you want to do? They want you. And I was like, what? I just, I'm not... I'm not even on the street Whoa. yet. Yeah. And he was like, okay, you so what you, what, yeah. what, what you want to do? Oh, my gosh. And I was like, uh, yes. But you were ready. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. loved it. Yeah. I was like, they had me. And did up. you know the producers? Did you know Rashida Jones? No, I didn't know no. anybody. But, but they, they wanted knew, you. But they knew me. They knew you. Mm-hmm. And they knew you from Getting On and from they Reno. Ma- they and mainly from... were fans of Getting On. Okay. Mm-hmm. It sounds like that opened so many doors for yeah. you, that show. Oh, yeah. It also the people who cast Mindy Project wrote mm-hmm. an episode arc for me because they loved it. I was able to go to Masters of Sex with a character arc because yes. they loved it. Beautiful. I was able to work with Ava DuVernay on Selma mm-hmm. because she loved it. So it it, it was it, it's a gift that and Alexander Payne downsizing. Alexander Payne, can't, listen, Alexander Payne. <laughs> l- let me tell you what he can, he just said. I'm in town. I had already said I would do it. I just want yeah. to meet you for five minutes. And uh-huh. I was like, I was in my mind going, for what? But I said, uh-huh. sure, I'm at work. But if you want to come up here, I was filming a soul man with Cedric the Entertainer. He came mm-hmm. up there and somebody recognized him. said, oh, my God, that's Alexander Bain. <laughs> and, blah, 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 blah. and I said, yeah. And I said, why is he here? I said, oh, he wants to give oh, me a role in his me. movie. And he said, he never put black people in his oh, movies. God. He must love you. <laughs> I said, I guess he does. I guess he does. Right. Right. That's so, remarkable. Alexander, where's my next role in your next movie? <laughs> I really hope you can get all the people you're addressing on the podcast to listen to this podcast. Hey, right. That would be great. Hey, yeah. right. Because <laughs> we need the we need the listeners. Oh so. yeah, we need to just send this link out. Just I'm gonna yes. email it to them all. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. please. Um, what can you tell us, if anything, about Claus season two? Season two. Um, you know, season one, I felt like Desna was pretty much behind the ball. She was trying to put out a lot of fires yeah. and just run running around chasing things. Yes. And I feel like season two, she's leading the charge a little more. Okay. And she has a new Russian mentor. Yes. Who is getting her prepared mm-hmm. for the big leagues. She's also balancing mm-hmm. a new love interest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Who may and, or may not be involved in some criminal activities as well. You know, <laughs> it's uh, you know, the woman is always the last to know. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot there between my lovers. Love but I, lo- I love that the, z- 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 
is it Riva? I love that the Russian mobster woman recognized Desna's talent and recognized that she could run things. Yeah, there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. Reva's yeah. sister comes to town. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and takes okay. me on as a personal mentor. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mentee, sorry. Uh huh. I'm her mentee. But you could be her mentor too. Well, not oh, well. Desna's going to be running things by the end of season two. I'm we calling try, it we, now. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. The show is gorgeous. It's gorgeous in a very specific way. It's uh it, the the genre uh, we call it is yeah. Florida noir. Yeah. But there's also very really u- unique Clausian moments, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's a dance number or a lip sync <laughs> totally. or a totally. or an or a water ballet. I mean, you know, there's right. always it's bonkers sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. It yeah. just you know it lifts you out, yeah, and then it br- and it grounds it. it right never back takes down. itself too seriously, Mm-mm. yeah. But there are scenes where that are super super tense and that have you running around in very high heels, and yeah. that are kind of then there's guns blazing and all of that. Are, are those scenes? Do you have to approach those differently than you approach maybe more comedic timing type scene? Well, I don't really get to play funny in this. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm, Carrie sure. Preston is there for the comic relief. Mm. Her and Jason Antoon, who plays, po- they play Polly and Dr. Ken. Right. They're there for the comic relief. I, they don't lean on me so much for that. Um, I feel like our show is a comedy, although the Academy <laughs> recognizes it as a drama. Okay. And, and that's partly because it's an be, hour? It's, I, don't, I don't know, because I don't know. Interesting. I don't it know, is somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah, so I feel like it's a comedy, but I think because the lead doesn't have comedic gotcha. moments, big comedic moments, they don't mm-hmm. recognize it as such. I guess that's often true of like comedic relief are often the supporting characters yeah. rather than the lead. Yeah. And especially in a crime thriller like yeah. this. Yeah. So we just said, okay. So now, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like we absolutely are not a show that you compare to The Handmaid's Tale. But but mm. because that's a true drama to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we got boys with glitter all over them, hula hooping in a club, <laughs> this is yeah. a comedy for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, but I feel like, you know, they, they yeah. just don't recognize it as such right now. Totally, totally. You know how like Orange is the New Black? Used to be Same a drama or yeah. comedy, and they, whatever it was, they mm-hmm. flipped and went a different way, but they don't see us that way. Sure. And similarly, it's a mostly female cast. It's a very queer yeah. cast, a lot of queer characters, queer mm-hmm. stories. Mm-hmm. And we need way more shows on TV like that, in my opinion. Well, what I love about our show is that it's the United Colors of Benetton in yeah. terms of not only <laughs> race, yeah. gender, and sexuality. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like wh- whatever your vibe is. And, and it's so funny because... We all, it, nothing feels incongruent. Nothing oh, yeah. feels like it doesn't fit. Like yeah. you buy the people in this world. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that Dean Norris, who's played by Uncle Daddy, comes in with a wife and a boy toy mm-hmm. on the side. And nobody even looks around. Nope. We're like, do your thing, bro. It's no big deal. Do your thing. Yeah. Like what, whatever floats your boat. Like uh, yeah. nobody, nobody is like, oh, wait a minute. Right. We just are like, it's our world. And the one Mm -hmm. thing about the world of Claws is that it's super accepting. It's like, Mm. and not primarily because it's like, we want to be that show on TV that accepts everybody. And, you know, the reality is, is that these characters are so consumed with their own foolishness. Oh, yeah. They don't even have time to care about what somebody else is doing. Yeah, exactly. They're like, whatever. (laughs) They're too caught up in their own. Yeah, I'm over here with a murder to deal with. What you (laughs) worried about who you sleeping with? Right, exactly. That's Mm. true. That's the thing. And that's the thing with diversity. It shouldn't, it doesn't need to be like a a button. It doesn't need to be a big deal. Yeah, it's just, it just is. Yeah, Mm. absolutely. Um, Thank you. I should ask you, I should, you've given us the wisdom. You've given us the, the practicality. You've given us the everything. Do you have any parting words of wisdom? for actors living Um, the dream any message of hope I just think that I've um, I think that I've said it all press rewind go back yeah because I I gave you all the good stuff you absolutely did I gave it to you and And the thing is like I really I love so much hearing about the way that you approach auditions and on the one hand I do think that actors can take that advice and very much use that to empower themselves especially in the audition room but on the other hand no one can do what Nisi Nash does (laughs) <laughs> it's like no one could have had your path but you. Well, and then there's that. But you know, you can look at other people and you can be inspired mm-hmm. and you can be sure, encouraged. Sure. You take the meat and you leave the bones. Yeah. Because cool. maybe only one little thing that I said may resonate with you. Somebody out there might be like, oh my God, well, she shut up already? Who's next? 
because it didn't land mm. with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, and that's sure. okay because when you hear things from certain people, everything is not going to be for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, you ask, you know, you asking me how what what my what my methodology is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can give you the methodology, yep. but I can't give can't you my everyone's. magic. Right. You see what I'm saying? Your totally. magic is your magic. Right. And if and if something that I say resonates or takes root, go and take that. Mm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And if it don't, that's fine too. Just tune in to Claus June 10th, Excellent. huh? <laughs> Even if you don't want my magic, watch my show. Hey, and always be closing. Always be hustling. <laughs> That's right. Plug it. Yeah. Plug it whenever you can. There you go. DC Nash, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I'm you. So Annie. thrilled that you're such a fan of us, and oh, we're such what? a fan of you. And what? <laughs> we love you. I love you back. Thank you. In the envelope, an awards podcast is recorded at Lotus Productions, Hyperbolic Audio, and Big Yellow Duck in New York City, and Soundbox LA, Mark Grau Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Like, rate, subscribe, tell your friends, and follow us on Twitter at In The Envelope. Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and thank you to the team at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. That's Peter Rappaport, Rowan al Francis Ramos, Caitlin Watkins, Lauren Rout, Mark Stinson, and especially Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope. Humble beginnings! <laughs>